Last week I mentioned that Sweden has a royal family, and I thought this week we could take a break from bitching about America and just bitch about Sweden instead. Sweden is not the only country in Europe to have a monarchy, and as an American I always find it fascinating when any country part of Western civilization in the 21st century still has a monarchy, even if it is purely symbolic. In America, getting rid of the king was literally the first thing we did over 200 years ago. Sweden has taken a lot from America. Fast food, Starbucks, an increasing rate of obesity, even Black Friday. But getting rid of the king? Nah. I believe that if you live in a country with a monarchy and you are not actively trying to stop paying millions every year to one family, then you have given up any right to complain about helping refugees. Throw out the royal family and change those castles into housing. You can even make racists happy by reserving those castles for Swedish homeless. Win-win. It's not often that a Swede cares so much about the royal family that they are willing to argue with me about it, which makes it even sillier that they have one in the first place. But most of the time when you talk to a Swede about how ridiculous this is, you get the same reaction as when you talk to them about Swedish neutrality during World War II. You get an embarrassed shrug. What are you gonna do? But I've had a few arguments in the past. One of the arguments was, well, the Swedish royal family, they're like our celebrities. You worship celebrities in America. Fair point, we do. It's stupid, but we do. Go into any grocery store in America and you will find 20 magazines with Kim Kardashian on the front cover. Go to any Swedish grocery store, you will find 20 magazines with the Swedish royal family on the front cover. And also, Kim Kardashian. If I wanted to see Kim Kardashian on the front cover of every magazine at the grocery store, I would have stayed in America. You worship our celebrities also. We don't give a shit about yours. Except Alexander Skarsgård. That man is so handsome, I want to kill myself. Another argument is, the royal family, they do great public relations for Sweden. Okay. You know who else does great PR? PR companies for a lot less money. And they don't live in fucking castles. A good PR firm could even help your brand so that people around the world would know that Sweden and Switzerland are not the same place. But it's history, it's tradition. Okay, that I get and I respect that. I do. It still does not mean you actually need a real royal family. You can just hire actors for big events and holidays. And then you go crazy. Like, you could hire an actor to be king who doesn't sound retarded. It is um, a great honor to be here and to see so many scouts gathered here in one place. To see so many scouts dead in here in one place. You could hire an actress to be crown princess whose chin is not so big it can be seen from space. No. Was that a mean thing to say about the princess? I'm sure she's fine. She can cry into her money, which is actually your money. Victoria's chin is so big Okay, see if I had an audience right now, they would scream out, How big is it? But you can do that now. Let's try it again. Victoria's chin is so big. It's so big that Jay Leno finally has someone to laugh at. Victoria. Madeline. Madeline, though. I'd crown that princess if you know what I mean. And she's into Americans. At least one American is into her, if you know what I mean. I don't know what I mean. My point is this, if you insist on having a royal family, then have it, you know, have fun with it. Game of Thrones is very popular in this country. There's fake royalty all over Europe. You should have fake wars with each other, fake invasions and 
palace intrigue and drama, send knights out on quests, slay dragons, find the Holy Grail, you know, just go crazy with it. There were two royal weddings in this country in the last several years. At least one of them could have been a red wedding. I would have watched that. 